We're following breaking news in the Middle East where 24 Israeli troops have been killed during combat in Gaza, the deadliest day for Israeli forces since the war began. Two two-story buildings collapsing in Khan Yunus. The IDF is saying terrorists fired at an RPG at a tank protecting an Israeli demolition team that had planted explosives and a secondary explosion then just leveled the buildings. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu mourning the soldiers vowing to continue forward until they have, quote, absolute victory over Hamas. Let's bring in now our experts. We have Executive Director Polaris, National Security and former State Department Special Advisor on Iran, Gabriel Nerona with us. Alongside him, Senior Fellow, America First Policy Institute and Newsmax contributor, Fred Flights. Gentlemen, a pleasure to have you both in today. Good to be here. Thanks, Anka. We've been talking about the resolve of the IDF, these soldiers, the incredible um, it will for them, if you will, when the, all the people, the reservists came forward to see now 24 killed. This is a huge number and a huge loss. How do you think it will impact uh, morale or will it just continue to bolster the mission at hand? Fred, first to you, sir. Uh, this is just horrible and it shows that there's a lot more work to do to uh, secure Gaza, to protect Israel's uh, uh, future. And it's why it is so outrageous that the Biden administration is pressing Netanyahu to end this war now yeah. and is actually negotiating a peace plan that Netanyahu objects to behind his back Ugh. with Arab states, with Qatar and Egypt. This has to stop. Let's stand with Israel. Let's is give Israel the time it needs to mm -hmm. take care of its security concerns in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when Secretary of State Blinken was over in uh, Israel and the Middle East, most recently, you were also at some of the same places, Gabriel, at the same time. Netanyahu was meeting behind Netanyahu's back with the war cabinet there. Uh, what's your take on where things stand with, you know, what is happening on the ground? And obviously, as to Fred's point there, the pressure from the Biden administration to uh, make deals that Israel does not want to make. You know, Fred's completely right. And here's the thing. One thing we heard is that the United States is putting more pressure on Israel than some of their own na Arab neighbors and partners are. Um, this talk about a two-state solution when one of those states wants the genocide of the other uh, really seems rather ludicrous to me. Um, what we need to have from our commander-in-chief is complete, unconditional support for Israel as long as it takes. That's what he pledged right after October 7th. And a bunch of us came and warned that's not going to last very long because yes. he's going to get pressure from his flank. And that's what we've seen. We've seen the president cave time I, and again. I have about a minute left. I want to get to both of you, though. We're watching the New Hampshire primary. So this war is a political issue as well, Fred. How do you think this is playing into some of Biden's moves, as both you and Gabriel have uh, laid out here pretty clearly? Biden's progressive left is very angry about this war. That's why Biden is getting wobblier and wobblier. And I just think he's prepared to sell Netanyahu out to win votes this November. Uh, I'll let you take that, Gabriel. Some say he is in jeopardy also because of just, uh, you know, October 7th, the fact it happened. It will be hard for him to survive with some of the intelligence failures as well. I think both Bibi and President Biden uh, both have a lot, um, you know, to answer from their voters. On President Biden's watch, we've lost Afghanistan. Uh, Ukraine got invaded by Russia. We saw the worst war in the Middle East break out. If voters are coming and thinking about their security, it's a pretty clear answer. Democrats are not going to be good to protect Americans here at home or abroad. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate your time today on the sad breaking news. 24 Israeli troops killed in Gaza. And obviously our heart is going out to their families. And also we have to also remember there are hostages. Um, and there is still a big call to bring them back. Gabriel, Fred, pleasure to have you both. Thank you, gentlemen, for the analysis today. Good to be here. Great to have you. Thanks, Bea. Thank you.